Hello, this is Yo Sensei. In today's tutorial, we will cover some of the hidden features of Rhino. There are some basic things that we covered in the first term, but there are more to it in terms of selecting objects and running other command objects. I hope you will find this tutorial useful. Okay, let's get started. So, uh, we are using Rhino, uh, Rhino 7, which is a new version. So this is, uh, you know, standard uh, Windows view. Um, so, uh, in the viewport navigation, uh, what we normally do is to use uh, um, scroll wheel on your mouse to, um, you know, uh, scroll in and out, uh, to zoom in and out. And um, so you can do it in, you know, top view, front view, uh, perspective, and right view. Uh, and then you can right drag, right drag to, uh, you know, move it around uh, and uh, spin it around. Uh, when your object is not spinning around uh, in the center, uh, so you can just select object and type Z, S, A, uh, zoom selected all, Z, S, A. Um, and then that's going to um, rotate everything around the object. Um, so the deeper cut uh, in this one uh, is to uh, be able to zoom. Sometimes one scroll wheel uh, move uh, isn't enough. If that's the case, you can hold Alt key on your keyboard um, or Option key on your Mac uh, and then right drag. Uh, so that you can have a better, um, smoother uh, transition. Okay. Um, next step is the shaded modes, uh, and uh, you can select wireframe and shaded, and you know rendered view and things like that here. Um, so the quick way to get in between uh, shaded mode and uh, um, wireframe mode is uh, this button right here. Uh, if you left click on this, it's going to show it as a shaded view and right click and uh, it shows as a uh, wireframe mode. So this is super useful uh, to quickly change it between uh, shaded view and uh, uh, wireframe mode. Okay, uh, Selecting objects uh, would be nice. So um, I am going to just uh, copy this object a bunch of times. Uh, and um, so I can select from right to left and uh, when I do that uh, all of the object needs to be included inside of the box and from left to right drag uh, all of the objects that are touching uh, this is going to be selected uh, but this actually works for uh, deselecting as well so if you hold control key and uh, drag from right to left and touching, uh, you can deselect multi, uh, you can deselect multiple objects, uh, which is quite nice. Shift to add to selection, and uh, the whole logic uh, applies to it too. And um, another thing that is really cool uh, in Rhino is that, for example, if you have these uh, kind of, you know, um, line object, and uh, the boxes are poly surface, uh, and uh, we can have some. Um, you know, flat surface as well. So you can and uh, maybe point objects as well. So there is a command uh, if you start typing SEL. So s selection command uh, gives you the, all, all of these uh, options. Uh, which is really nice. Cell all, cell annotation style, cell brush, and cell chain, and things like that. So, if I want to only select surface, type SEL SRF, cell surf, uh, cell surf, and uh, that's going to select only the, uh, you know, surface object. You can type cell curve, SEL CRV, uh, and uh, it will select only curves. Uh, and then you can do cell poly surf, and then that's going to select a boxes. And um, so that could be useful. Okay. Uh, another awesome new feature in Rhino is that uh, you have selection filter. 
selection filter. And uh, what selection filter is going to do is it's going to let you turn on and off certain object types. So it's super useful to have it docked uh, here. Uh, and uh, so I can just uh, turn off poly surfaces so that I am not able to select uh, surfaces, uh, poly surfaces, but I can still select uh, surfaces. Uh, what's really useful about this is that uh, when you go into shaded modes and then you only turn off surfaces, um, poly surfaces, um, you are oh, actually you are not able to select single surface. So um, we will get to that, but uh, selection filter is super useful. Okay, uh, moving objects uh, is uh, pretty cool. So. Um, So we can just move objects by dragging uh, or we can just run move command by typing move um, move uh, and then move from here uh, from here to here uh, but you can also click on this object and click on this and then you can type 10 inches then it will move 10 inches or 10 feet. Okay, so uh, moving, if you want to move these objects, you can just uh, single click on these arrows uh, so that they are going to move. Uh, copying objects, uh, you can just click on it and type copy and then copy multiple times. Uh, so that's, that's cool, right? Uh, but if you want to have a um, equal uh, distance between them, uh, what you can do is draw a single curve by turning on object snapping and then uh, turning on endpoint and point, uh, point mid um, intersection perpendicular. So you can click activate um, object snapping by you know activating these these parts oh, snap okay um and then you can just draw a like five feet five foot line okay and then uh copy this object from this endpoint to this endpoint of the curve next what you can do is start from the second curve second cube and then run copy command again and then copy point to copy from you can select on the previous one and go to the next ones so that this will give you um you know equal distancing uh on it so if you actually want to se select everything else but the first one you can still copy and then go to the um, bottom left corner of it so you can um copy them at the same distance, which is nice. Um, another cool feature about uh, copying is, uh, so for example, if you have this kind of straight line, and uh, then if you have this kind of curvy line, there is a command called tween curves, tween curves. And uh, what Twin Curves is going to do is that um, it's going to uh, create a blending of these curves. So you can, I can select these curves. Um, oops. Um, and then uh, change this number uh, to be like 10 or so. So then it's going to create this kind of like, you know, transitional uh, morphing effect of between curves, uh, which is really cool. Um, and then uh, there is a really cool, uh, next stop is undoing, uh, but there is a really cool feature where, uh, for example, if you uh, create uh, this kind of cube and then you uh, create copy of this, uh, you know, 10 times. And then uh, you will, for example, uh, run uh, something like you know um, Boolean difference uh, 
and uh, I lost these. But I think there is going to be a situation where I want to keep this and the previous object at the same time. So when you're in this kind of situation, so you select this object and uh, control C or run uh, the copy command and then undo it so that you have the original object here and then you run paste command uh, control V or um, you know the paste button and then uh, this way you will have the both the future object and the previous object so uh, this is pretty useful Okay, so the next one is to uh, create, um, so the rotation is something that we have done before, uh, and then you can rotate this object using the gumball. Uh, but there is a new command uh, that is called rotate 3D. And uh, rotate 3D is super useful uh, in a way that you can rotate this object using the axis um, like this uh, and uh, in an accurate way. Uh, and uh, you can even, you know, punch in uh, some of the uh, angles as well as the numbers. So uh, this way uh, you are able to uh, rotate this object in a very, uh, you know, controlled way. The scale uh, we had talked about uh, in the first term uh, as scale 3D, scale 1D, and scale 2D. Uh, but in the tool options there, uh, so you can just you know scale 1D and uh, make this object long, uh, which is a super useful tool. Um, and you can make it shorter as well. Um, but there is a option inside of the command that says copy no. And uh, if you turn this on, copy yes, then you can uh, keep uh, changing scale 1D and then you can keep uh, really, um, you know, uh, copying this object. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's super useful. So all of the, you know, uh, objects, uh, commands have this kind of option. So uh, please pay attention to uh, the command area. The next one is a mirror command. With mirror, uh, you can create, uh, you know, this kind of uh, object copying uh, pretty easily uh, by bulk. Uh, and uh, you can do this in front view or top view or side view or any other views. So uh, if you are creating this kind of pattern uh, quickly, uh, this is super useful. And uh, always pay attention to the command area uh, and uh, that's going to give you some hint of what you should do next. Next one is uh, extrude curve. Um, and uh, again, uh, extrude curve has this kind of like solid and, uh, you know, uh, not solid uh, options. Um, and uh, one thing that is useful, I think, uh, within this is that uh, you can actually create multiple uh, closed curves uh, within your object. Uh, and uh, they shouldn't be overlapping with each other, then that's going to create self-intersection. But with these uh, curves, uh, you can extrude, run extrude command and uh, turn on solid. Uh, then uh, it's going to give you uh, this kind of you know, uh, object, solid object with openings, uh, which is super useful. The next command that I would like to show you uh, is a um, revolve. So in the first term, what we did was um, to revolve with um, kind of open object to create wine glass or something or apple or something. 
But if you run it with this kind of closed curve, uh, you can actually create uh, this kind of base-like object pretty easily. And uh, this is going to be a pretty useful uh, object when we get into subdivision tools. So uh, please, uh, you know, uh, make use of it. So the last one in this section is going to be the sweep uh, command. Uh, and uh, so sweep is something that you can run with cross section and rail. So we can create this kind of star shape as a, a cross section. And uh, this curve should actually be uh, at the tip of the curve. And uh, it should be uh, not too big. Uh, because it won't turn the corner and it should be pretty much in, uh, perpendicular to the beginning of the curve. So sweep one uh, and then select the rail and then select cross section. So this command uh, is not going to let you type enter after, after selecting rail. So always pay attention to the command line area uh, and uh, that is going to give you uh, what you need to do at the current stage. So the last thing that I would like to tell you is that um, when you're in some kind of command, uh, there is a super useful tip that is if you press F1 key on your keyboard, uh, it's going to give you the tool help. Uh, Rhino is going to open tool help if you press F1 key, function 1 key. So uh, again, uh, I'm going to run another command like uh, twin curves. Uh, and uh, if you press F1, then it's going to open up the tool help. So this, this is going to give you a super useful um, kind of guide to uh, what you need to do currently. So uh, when in doubt, uh, always use the tool help uh, to reference uh, what you need to see. Okay, it will, this will conclude this session. Uh, I hope this was useful. See you in the next video.